we're in the Midwest Regional. The final piece to the Frozen Four puzzle will be put into place tonight inside of the Memorial Coliseum. The winner advancing to the Frozen Four in Detroit, Michigan, the Miami Red Hawks. A much closer game. They came away with a 2-1 victory, though, to advance to this Midwest Regional Final thanks to Carter Camper's play. It's the Miami Red Hawks and the Michigan Wolverines squaring off for the right to advance to the 2010 Frozen Four in Detroit. Well, look at this group of guys we got going on here right now. A little quarantine craziness as we do some reminiscing. And we were thinking back to the 2009-2010 season. And first off, particularly, we're going to go back to March 28th. And that was the double overtime victory game against the University of Michigan that sent the Red Hawks to their second straight Frozen Four. As you can see with us joining us, we got Tommy Wingle. We got Chris Weidman, Connor Knapp, Pat Canoni, and the guy that scored the game-winning goal, Alden Hirschfeld, along with current Miami head coach Chris Bergeron. He was an assistant back then. And have you guys had a chance to go back and, and, and watch highlights of this game recently or, or really think back what that game meant to you? Tommy, let's, let's start with you. You were the team captain. Yeah, you know, uh, I went back recently to watch just because, uh, you know, it's all these re – reruns were shown on ESPN. I know our other game was shown recently on there, so it brought up the good memories of this. And um, it's funny how different the, the quality of the, of, of the video is looking at these, these highlights. You know, it looks like it's from the 80s, but we're not really that old. But <laughs> it's fun to see the guys out there and, and uh, reminisce of, of the shifts and the lines and the people you played with. So this is fun to see the guys here on the Zoom call. And, um, you know, these are conversations we have all the time. Winning it in. Backdoor man was coming. It was Volo Huber. Pass not there in time. Coming up on two minutes gone here. Double over, time there it is! They win it! Miami goes back to the Frozen Four! First, let's go to you. You scored the game-winning goal. We'll get to Canoni in just a minute because he had the, the other two goals. But first, you got the game winner. Tell me what you remember about that moment, about that game. Obviously, the game, the game was an uh, unbelievable outcome. But from going back and watching the video, what I noticed was I made a horrific pass at the blue line into Weidman's feet, and then he tried to send it back door. And uh, thankfully, somebody stayed on it, got it back to me, and I, you know, blew a horrific shot, but it found its way into the back of the net. <laughs> You're being a little modest. I went back and listened to the post game afterwards, and Rico at that point said, in 10 years, he said, in the 20 years, Hershey's going to say I went end to end and, it, and ripped it through the – right past the goaltender. But, uh, hey, it – it all counts, right? Yeah, that's right. They don't, uh, all right. Patty, let's go to you, Patrick Canoni. You had the, the two goals, uh, including, first off, you gave the, the guys the lead in that game. There, Russ took the draw. He wears 19, chance in front, they score! Knocked in Canoni! And then Michigan scored twice, took a 2-1 lead, but you answered right back. Kenzie now on the backhand, tries to walk out, trying to jam one in. Hunwick down, puck loose! They got a lot chance, they score! They tied it! 2-2! What do you remember about that night and scoring those two goals? Yeah, I, I, well, the first goal, I think, was a power play goal, and um, I think it was just kind of hard work by Curtis and uh, Camper, um, you know, getting the puck to the net there. And uh, I knew it was coming, so I just wanted to get hard of my stick and just kind of put it on net. And you know, I was fortunate enough to get it over his shoulder. I think he was a small goalie. It was it? What's his name? Sauer. Sean Hunwick. No, that's Sauer. Hunwick. That was it. So, yeah, I just wanted to get it up, and uh, fortunate enough, it went in. And I think the first goal they scored, I think, it was my fault. I kind of got sucked into the play and um, <laughs> kind of lost my man. And um, you know, they got that back, and then. Uh, I believe my second goal was just a scrum in front. I just pulled out the fire poker and just, you know, battled in front and just slid it in there under his pad. So, uh, yeah, it was a wild game. Dirty goal. So, Wyman, you were uh, a part of a great defensive core, and we'll talk to Napper here in just a second. But, Wyman, you were part of a defensive core in that game, holding a, a very, very good Michigan team, scored a lot of goals, kept them to two goals in that game for, what, 80-plus minutes in that game. Yeah, I mean, I think the the biggest thing for the, for the defensive side is we, we were without Laverde. Uh, he missed the game due to the stuff uh, going on with his heart. So that's probably the the hardest thing for us. I mean, he was a big part of of our team and, and the decor for sure. So um, trying to yeah stop the uh, Michigan offense without him was tough. And we had Napper back there, and and uh, you know he did a great job. 
Man, that he did. So not saving the, the last for least for sure, Napper. Let's, uh, let's get you in here. 55 saves. Believe it or not, that still right now is the, the most saves that, that a goaltender has made like in the last 15 years for a Miami team. What do you remember about that, especially the, the first overtime? He got back outside the line. Lynch, here's Hagelin. Oh, he's denied another chance. And Lynch, as he finds Hagelin, puts a nice saucer pass over to him. And what a save by Connor Knapp. Yeah, I mean, I remember it was a crazy game. I was, uh, you know, before uh, when we were setting this call up, I was talking to Trags, and uh, we laughed that that morning at morning skate, I had one of the worst uh, morning skates ever. You know, I don't think I stopped a single puck. and. Uh, you know, they, they had contemplated doing a last minute switch on me. And uh, um, yeah, it was a wild game. I think, yeah, missing Liberty was, was something that we were aware of. We knew we needed to batten down the hatches and um, mm. also we contended with that rink, you know, had deep corners in it, kind of uh, fit Michigan speed a, a bit, but we did a good job containing. I think a lot of those 55 shots were, were to the outside. And, you know, I saw, saw a lot of them was able to corral most of them. Uh, a couple uh, bobbles that led to some scrambles. But for the most part, you know, it was a, just a solid all-around effort by the team, five periods. And, Burge, uh, you had to help try to, to maintain some some calmness for these guys. What was the, the, like, the attitude in the locker room after regulation going into the first overtime? And then, really, Michigan, I think they outshot you guys 20-6 to six in that first overtime. What was it like in the locker room there trying to get the guys ready and, and prepared to keep on going? Yeah, any coffee in the last uh, half hour? Are you still good down there on the bench, partner? I'm still pretty good. I'm still pretty good going on adrenaline right now. No doubt about it. Uh, tell us uh, what's going on with this game from your perspective or in the overtime. You guys, I guess I'll go back to the third period. You guys had a lot of chances to win this game. Frustrated you didn't, obviously, but uh, let's talk about uh, your thoughts overall at this point. I, I think you hit it on the head. Of it. We felt good about our third period, and, uh, you know, we had a couple kills there late in the third and then into overtime. I think by the last 10 minutes of that overtime period, they, they took it to us pretty good, and Connor Knapp had to uh, make some big saves. So we need to get that momentum back, and, we you know, we feel like we're obviously both teams are one shot away. They're two tired teams right now. The ice is bad. You know, all, all the things you hear all the time uh, at this time of a game. And, uh, you know, hopefully we can get some momentum here and, uh, and get going in the second overtime. I don't remember it being anything out of the ordinary, Wads. I mean, this was a veteran group as far as we'd been to the Frozen Four the year before and went through what we went through losing late in the game. And the whole season, that group was, they just kept coming. And, uh, I mean, we, we had a really good regular season. I, I don't remember there being much panic. Where, where we started to think about it is a week earlier, Michigan took it to us really good at right. Joe Lewis. And they... they they kicked the crap out of us, and um, it was one we wanted another shot at them, although we didn't think we were going to see them. So to get to that game again, and then, and then the way it was going, I don't remember any panic in our group. Um, and and I, I think, you know, whether it was now for big saves or guys making, guys making plays, uh, we were confident it was just going to be a matter of time, and who was who it going to be? Uh, that's what I remember now. Yeah, whether that's the way it was or not, I guess I guess uh, that's for history. I don't know. Uh, it was a lot of – I watched the, the end of the second period, third period, first overtime, and the, then the game winner from Hearst last night. That was the first time I'd watched it back. And, and Napper, you might remember this. Early in the first period – or the first overtime, there was a play where they had a goal disallowed. And it was a real bang-bang play. There was a penalty on the play, too, that blew the play dead. But – what do you think, or what do you remember about that part, the, the disallowed goal in the first overtime? Yeah, I mean, it was definitely nerve-wracking uh, at the time. You know, de you know, pretty clearly went in the net, and there was some confusion um, right away as to why the whistle got blown. But I was pretty confident when they went to review it that, that the you know ref had blown the whistle because of the penalty, and that's not really something they can overturn. So yeah. the mindset, you know, almost right away was we're going to keep playing here. Um, and I always. Uh, you know, justified that because, you know, people asked about it. Uh, I think it was their first goal. I kind of got bumped and, uh, you know, twisted around in the net that they scored. So I just chalked it up for a little bit of karma for us. Yeah, it all evens out in the long run. Tommy, kind of pick up what Burge was saying there just a minute ago, too. You were the team captain, the leadership, how much better experience you guys have had because of the, the year before the, the 09 National Championship game. What was it like for you as the team captain trying to lead these guys and Kind of following up what Burr said. Yeah, it's, you know, looking back on it now, you, you realize how special of a group it actually was. You know, at the time that you have a good group of guys, 
not just players on the ice who can who can really compete and and, and be accountable on the ice, but a group off the ice. And you know, I, I think this is one of the closest teams we had over the years. Uh, this is a group of guys that um, at the time loved being around each other. I think even now, you know, ten years later, are a group of guys that are still in contact and, and still like to hang out with each other. So I think that's unique to um, Miami. I think that's unique to, to what we had there. And, you know, it speaks a lot about the guys that are part of it. So, um, you know, it starts with the coaches and birds and, 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 you know, setting that tone in for all the players and, you know, and the players to continue that on. Patty, what about you as far I mean, you uh, as well were, were part of the team the year before? Well, all you guys were part of the team the year before that too. So what do you remember about trying to stay calm, getting ready to, to, to play one of your rivals in a game that was going to send you to a, a, a chance to go back to the Frozen Four? Yeah, I totally, uh, totally forgot what Burge mentioned earlier that we recently played Michigan before that and they kind of took it to us. So um, – you know, obviously we wanted, you know, another piece of them. Um, but I'll be honest, it was a little nerve wracking, you know, going in and um, knowing that we're probably going to match up with the, uh, them again, knowing their speed and, and everything. Um, but like everybody said, our, our group was, has been together for a number of years. And uh, I believe that year we won the regular season title, um, if I'm not mistaken. So, you know, we had a lot of depth and a lot of leadership, um, you know, so um, – you know, it was one of those games where it could have went either way, uh, you know, Michigan's way or our way, and we were fortunate enough to get the bounce. Absolutely. Hey, Wides, as far as uh, you're concerned, Michigan was like a big rival, too. It seemed like for a number of years it was either Miami or Michigan that, that were always battling to get to that spot, not only to win the CCHA, but maybe even advance on deep in the tournament. Yeah, no, it, it seemed like uh, we were always at the top of the league with them. Um, you know, we had a ton of kids on the team that were – from Michigan, and, and I can think of a, a shorter forward that won the Hobie Baker years later that probably <laughs> didn't even get recruited by Michigan and, and always held that uh, against them. So we just uh, – we seemed to play our best against uh, the big-time teams in, in the big games, and um, a lot of that had to do with uh, the, the experience that we gained the year before and, and uh, the teams that came before us and how, how much success they had in the tournament. Uh, hey, Hersh, as far as you're concerned, too, I mean, and Burns kind of mentioned this, too, it, it almost sense like it, it could have been any one of you guys to score that game winner, maybe except for Napper, of course, but any, any one of you guys could have been the one. There was so much talent, so much depth on that team, too. Yeah, absolutely. And you know what? Like the rest have said, it was such a tight-knit group that at that point, it didn't matter, and it didn't matter that entire year. All we wanted to do as a team was win. And, uh, uh, you know, for the opportunity to do that and me to get lucky enough to, to score that was, was awesome. But at the same time, the, you know, more important was the team to get to all go together back to the Frozen Four. Absolutely. And you can tell the way you guys celebrated after that game was over as well. And, guys, great uh, catching up with you here to uh, reminisce about that game. March 28th, 2010, that was a double overtime win. Miami advancing to their second straight NCA Frozen Four. It was a lot of blast. So, guys, appreciate you stopping by. And, again, uh, catch up another Red Hawk Rewind. That's coming up in the next couple of days. So, hope you'll tune in again. This Red Hawk Rewind brought to you by Centos. Appreciate you watching in. I'm Greg Waddell, Love and Honor. <laughs>